Welcome to the Industrial Talk Podcast with Scott McKenzie. Scott is a passionate industry professional dedicated to transferring cutting-edge, industry-focused innovations and trends while highlighting the men and women who keep the world moving. So put on your hard hat, grab your work boots, and let's go. All right, welcome to the Industrial Talk Podcast. Absolute honor, once again, that you joined the number one industrial-related podcast in the universe, the galaxy, all around the world, right here. We celebrate you, the industrial and uh, manufacturing professionals, the people that get it done. You are bold, you are brave, you dare greatly. And boy, do you innovate, and thank you very much for what you do. You're making my life better, and you're making the lives around the world better. That's why this is important that we celebrate you each and every day on this particular podcast. All right, we got Bobby Mason. He's in the hot seat. He's in the Industrial Talk hot seat. He is the CEO and president of SPOC, S-P-O-C, Automation, Inc. And we're going to be talking a lot about you're saying, Scott, you going to be talking about automation? No. Nope. That's just a part of it. We're going to be talking about culture. We're going to be talking about how he leads his team at Spock. Let's get going. Great conversation. I love it. I love it. And, yeah, absolutely. He's about automation. He's about innovation. He's about everything that you can imagine that's associated with his business and how to create a business of resiliency. That's what they do out at Spock Automation. But he does it through an amazing leadership technique called lifting up. Lifting up. And he really focuses in on the people, his people, and not just people, people all over the community. The customer. How do you lift up your customer? How do you lift up people? How do you lift up your customer? How do you lift up the industry? And then, of course, how do you lift up the country? It's just a natural progression. And everything that they do at Spock Automation sort of runs around and overlays with that lift-up culture. Yeah, yeah, he's a rock star. Yeah, he's amazing. Yeah, he's on this particular podcast, and it's absolute honor to have him here. Now, before we really get going, again, I want to be able to just share with you uh, some of the things that we are doing here uh, on the Industrial Talk Podcast. One, we're all about creating, you know, a collaborative. That's what this is about. We celebrate all the people, but it's in a world of collaboration. We believe here in Industrial Talk, you're going to have to collaborate. You're going to have to innovate, and that's what, uh, you know, Robert, Bobby, by the way, just FYI. If you go out to his stat card on LinkedIn, it's Robert L. Mason, but it's really Bobby. Right, just just got right to the chase. We go to the same barber, by the way. And uh, anyway, we start talking about collaboration. We talk about innovation and the necessity to be innovative and find people that are innovative. We talk about education, and and this is what this industrial talk platform is all about. And we're talking about a place to go that you can collaborate. Go out there. I, I've got these individuals, these leaders in industry, these leaders in manufacturing, and you can reach out to them each and every day. And they are bold, they are brave, they dare greatly, and, and boy, they change in the world. And that's what the Industrial Talk podcast is all about. We want you to collaborate. We want you to innovate. We want you to educate. We want you to be tenacious and make it happen. We want you to do it with a sense of speed and purpose because we need you to be successful in the future, right? We need you to be resilient in your business. Because we don't know what the future is going to hold, but I'm just telling you right now, there are people, there are companies that want to work with you to collaborate, innovate, and definitely educate, and they're all tenacious, and they want to do it with a sense of speed and purpose. Yeah, I'm saying that. You need to go out to industrialtalk.com, find out more, or just dot on, reach out to me, and I'll talk to you more about it. All right, on to the hot seat, Industrial Talk hot seat. Bobby Mason, and if you, once again, go out to his amazing stat card out there on LinkedIn, you're going to see Robert L. Mason. Whatever. Just put Spock, S-P-O-C, not the other Spock. Automation, and you're going to get loaded down with a number of great, I mean, his activity's great. He's a leader. He, he is, and we're going to be talking about that lift-up culture and what they do at Spock Automation to keep, productive, happy, engaged 
individuals that are just dedicated to the purpose of what Spock brings to the table. All right. Thank you very much. Here is, uh, well, Bobby, right? I'm looking at a stack card. I don't want to say Robert, but here's Bobby. Enjoy uh, the conversation. All right, Bobby. Welcome to the Industrial Talk Podcast. Absolute honor that you have found time in your busy schedule to talk to the listeners of Industrial Talk. How are you doing there, Bobby? I'm doing great. And Scott, thank you so much. This is a great honor to be on your show. <laughs> thank you. It is an honor. It's the number one industrial and manufacturing podcast in the universe. I have nothing to back that up, and I think I'm overselling it, but I'm going to continue to say it. Okay. As you should. As I should. All right, Bobby. Now, you're, you're the uh, CEO, president of, uh, I want to say Spock, but is that what? Is that, that is correct. Spock, Spock Automation. Automation. Okay, got it. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, uh, your lift up culture, but before we get going on that one, because that's going to be a great topic, listeners out there, it's going to be a great topic. Uh, give us a little 411 on who uh, Bobby is and why you're such an incredible professional in you know, your history. Well, you know, I have been in the electrical distribution and automation business the majority of my life. My, my father was uh, an entrepreneur. I'm a second generation entrepreneur. And That's why all entrepreneurs have no hair. <laughs> it just is what it is. It's, it's a fact of life. Well, I actually thought it was because it made me more aerodynamic. <laughs> it, 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 it does, however, it does. <laughs> That's the good side of that. <laughs> Continue. I'm sorry, babe. Oh, you're fine. He, he actually sold that business to a national chain. Um, and we had a difference of philosophy in culture, quite frankly. And so I left uh, with a handful of individuals uh, we'd already come up with some software solutions for the oil and gas industry around controlling uh, rod pumps, which is that one you always see on the news story going up and down that reciprocating pump. Yeah. Um, and, and doing it in a, in a fashion that had never been done before, controlling it. Uh, and so we, we started this company up uh, almost 20 years ago. And we have just been incredibly blessed with a great team that, that is just totally focused on helping people. And, you know, I actually, I equate automation to being like a fine dining experience. <laughs> and you can look so at me and tell, I like, I, I like to eat. That in, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm all with you, but I've never heard that in a sentence before, but well, let me that. expand. <laughs> and, and, and the reason I, I equate it to a fine dining experience is when you go to a restaurant way before you ever begin to eat that meal, that chef has gone out and he's procured the best components he can possibly find, you know, farm to table, right. fresh meats and, and fruits and vegetables, whatever it is. And he's put a lot of preparation and a lot of care into that. And, he can bring that to the table, but if you don't have great service with that fine meal, it's just a meal. But when you have great service along with excellent products, then it becomes an experience. And so I, that is, that's exactly what we do. We try to provide us an experience. See, and, and, and I would imagine that uh, you get a little pushback because uh, there's some quote, negativity that's associated with automation. You're trying to get rid of my job. But I don't think that that's going to be, that's the case. And I think that that's the story that needs to be pulled within automation. Absolutely. What we want to do is come up beside you and help you, give you better information, allow you to focus on areas that are problems uh, mechanically, because we're doing the electrical controls. Um, and, and we actually or an aid and what we have found, and especially in the oil and gas industry, where uh, traditionally it's, this is the way my grandfather did it and my dad did it and this is the way we're gonna do it. That mindset is shifting, thank goodness. Uh, but but the, the yeah. guys have learned that we're there to help. I, I think just, let me, let me just sort of uh, lay it out there. And I think pre-virus, pre-pandemic, pre-whatever, two-finger death punch, the, uh, the, the focus was a little bit different. Everything was sort of swimming. We were working, we were doing, and we had these strategic plans to, in two, five, whatever years, we're going to be able to do X, Y, Z. And that is with any uh, 
digitization, IoT, Industry 4.0, whatever it might be, as well as automation. I think everything was like, okay, that's good. COVID hits, boom, all bets are off the table. We need to do something else. We need to figure out how to be more resilient, more efficient, more of this and save money and do whatever it takes. I think it's just really, you know, pushed the envelope on why these are important strategic directions for companies and automation and the innovation behind automation is key. Absolutely. We focus primarily on land-based and, and, Traditionally, they have been behind in automation. Yeah. Uh, and the only way for them to survive and actually thrive on the other side is to start automating these processes and, and, and having their stuff more efficient and save yeah. 25% on their uh, electrical consumption and, yeah. and lower that lifting cost. Yeah, it's, it's been, a, it's, from my perspective, a real renaissance and a, a focus into uh, solutions that are truly innovative. And I think companies that are focused on resiliency because we don't know if it, it's going to happen again, right? We don't know if that genie is already out of the bottle and somebody's going to say, yeah, it's another pandemic, whatever it might be. At least your business is going to survive the next one if it ever happens. Lord willing, it's not. So it is what it is. All right. Now, uh, we could talk about automation all day. I got one point of clarification. What does Spock mean? Outside Spock of- is actually an acronym and it stands for sensorless pump off control. And where that resides is... Uh, we're, now we're, I understand why it's an acronym. <laughs> that's, that's right. a long domain. <laughs> it is. We, uh, we're drives experts, variable frequency drives. Right, and that's, right. you know, we've, we've deployed over 70,000 into the oil and gas fields across the world. And, and what we did is that reciprocating beam pump application. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have some software that we developed that allowed us to do that without dynamic braking resistors. And uh, it's a long story, but we can do pump off control using the motor itself. Ah, very good. Very good. I uh, see that's innovation. That's, that's in, and it's, um, I like how it does. I mean, I mean, you change the market in a sense and you're going to continue to change the market because that's how you think. And when we start talking about thinking, one of the, the, the points I'd love to be able to expand upon and, and, and we've talked about, We've talked about a lot of stuff on the Industrial Talk podcast, but I'm intrigued by your lift up culture. And I got to ask you the question, what is that? Lift up culture. That is something that I am super passionate about um, because it's about my people and, and my team. Um, when we started this company, it was a result of, of leaving a poor culture to develop one. And so lift up in, in its shortest form is just this. We try to, as a company, lift up the individual, give them an opportunity so that they can thrive and, and, and improve and grow within our company. We, give the, uh, we, we want to lift up each other because if you look to the left and the right of you, that person is depending on you to do a great yeah. job. We try to lift up our customers by giving them innovation by lowering their lifting costs, by helping them with all of their rotating equipment, pumps and compressors and all those controls. And we try to lift up our industry because our industry needs people that are out there that are experts. Let's face it, the oil and gas industry is full of wonderful people, but there are a lot of plumbers and not a lot of guys in in the electrical side, especially in the automation side. Right. And then ultimately, our ultimate goal that everyone here has bought into is that we believe in our heart of hearts that we are ultimately trying to lift up our country. Because if we can do things to help our country be energy independent, then we are going to be a stronger nation. And so that's really what that lift up culture's base foundation is all about. Now, all of a sudden, we just have to wrap up the podcast because I don't know where else to go with this. I do know. Don't worry. I got it. All right, listeners, we're talking a little bit about lift-up cultures. We're talking about the impact of lift-up culture with people, the customers, the industry, which is, happens to be oil and gas, and it could be anything, and the country. And what I like about it, uh, Bobby, is the fact that it's truly other focus. It's truly service focus. It's like, it's not about me. It's about you. It's about your success. It's about your help. We need to help. And I think in this, in this world, from my perspective of how I've constantly tried to hammer on, we need to collaborate, we need to innovate, we need to educate with a sense of speed and purpose, especially now, that lift-up culture fits right in there 
and it goes from all the way from the people in the front line all the way to the country. And I like it. I like it a lot. Well done on that one. Okay. Give me an example of what that looks like. You know, that looks like a lot of things. Um, we have, uh, we've got a lot of awards and, and all kinds of accolades and those, and those are great. And we appreciate all of that, but really at the end of the day, our, our products, the, the way we view everyone is everyone in this company is an innovator. So not only are our products innovative, but every process that we do is, needs to be innovated. And we're constantly yes. looking for a better way. Um, a good example would be uh, we, we actually have a, have a product out in the oil and gas fields that we have a extended warranty called Drive Shield. And because of our culture, because we care, because we put great components in, all those things, we can warranty a drive, a variable frequency drive package for six out to 10 years, even against a lightning strike. It's unheard of. Yeah, it it's is. literally unheard of, yeah. but it is a way that we can, because we've done a lot of engineering, have tens of thousands of units out in the field. We know what it takes. So it's a way that we can lift up our customers if they have that act of God and, and lightning were to hit that drive and they had bought our extended warranty package with the drive, we replace it. Now, where else in the world can yeah. you get a company that looks out for you like that? And, and what's interesting, and I would imagine I, uh, this thought came to mind, and a lot, of the, the, a lot of these units are probably out in the middle of nowhere. Yes. And, and it's not like, hey, I'm going to run to the Walmart, grab a loaf of bread, and then, by the way, I'm going to change that thing that's right next to the Walmart. It's easy peasy. Just going to do it. It doesn't yeah. happen that way. I it guarantee just happens you. to be three hours on a dirt road off the closest <laughs> highway. That's exactly right. And you got to sit there, and then it's, you know, 150 degrees out there, and you're like, oh. Yes. Got to have a smile on your face, and that's what's got it. And if, if you're truly a uh, uh, lift-up culture, and you're talking about energy independence, got to have that smile on the face and get on out there. That's a great example. I like that. It, it is. And, and another way we do it, you know, we have, we have five core values that we, we live by and it's committed, caring, passionate, solution focused, uh, and gratifying. And so what we do, it, it, we keep that in front of everybody every day. And, and it's, it's plastered all over everything that we do. There's visual reminders, they're verbal. Um, and that's just part of the culture of who we are. And it's actually kind of interesting how we came up with those. I hired a consultant because I was a, a naysayer, so to speak, <laughs> or early on. Right. And I hired a consultant to come in and help us. Uh, and he convinced me through reading some, uh, several, uh, papers that uh, the Harvard Business Review had had put on culture yeah, and yeah. own core values, mission, purpose, all those things. But I, I was just not passionate about it because I had seen in my career so many individuals that come in and they hand you this piece of paper and they tell you, this is our core values. This is our mission statement. But they no more lived it out than the man yeah. on the moon. Oh, yeah. And I've always been that guy that if I tell you it's going to rain, you better take your umbrella to work because I'm not going to lie to you. And right. don't ask me if you don't want to know what right. my opinion is. Right. So I hired him. He, he came in. We, we went, we talked ahead of time. And he said, uh, you know, it usually takes people a year, maybe two years to flesh it out, blah, blah, blah. And, and I said, no, we know who we are. We've always known who we are. We just had not documented it. And he said, you and every other customer that I've ever, or client I've ever worked with said the same thing. So we went through this exercise and in 45 minutes, we had our core values nailed. Now we took yeah. another six, six or eight months to flesh out the wording behind it. Right. But then I got a little paranoid. So I hired a second consultant to come in. To validate and, it. And to validate that I was not just <laughs> blowing smoke. <laughs> And, and that one came in and they actually sat with all of our people. Uh, they did the job with them. They literally right. for two weeks sat out there and worked in production. They worked in shipping. They worked in engineering. Sure. They sat side by side. They came back. They gave me this, this thick 50 something page report. And he said, Bobby, 
I know you're going to read this and think this is kind of a, a, a kiss, kiss up type report. Right, right. But you got something really, really special here with nice. your culture. Nice. He said, you know, the, the thing you want to do is you've got a couple of gaps that you need to address. And, and one of them is the, these men and women put together the, their true craftsmen, their, their artisans, so to speak, in, in what they build, right. take a lot of pride in it, and they do a great job. But they don't have closure. And I said, well, that's interesting. What do you mean by closure? He said, well, they, they put their blood, sweat, and tears into making this product phenomenal for you, and it looks great. But then it gets on a truck and it's shipped out west to an oil field and they don't ever get the feedback from the customer. Right. Did it, did it do its job? Did it help you? Did it benefit you? Uh, were these things, uh, what you expected, what could, you know, that type stuff that the sales and, and myself the management team, we go see customers. So we get that information. So I took it upon myself. We hired a, a video crew to come in. And, and we did a bunch of interviews unbeknownst to all these uh, employees and they didn't know what I was doing. And, and then we went out and we spent a, f a week out in, in West Texas filming customers to get their feedback. Right. And then at the end of our year, when we do our lift up awards and give out our, our, our uh, award ceremony, I ran this video that was a kind of a yin and yang, a field and a, and a company perspective. Right. And I had grown men who are pretty burly, tough guys in tears. Oil and gas, baby. <laughs> and they were literally in tears. Yeah. Uh, it was, turned out to be such a powerful video. Love it. Uh, we, held, we held on to it for about a year and a half before we actually put it out on the website just because so many customers that had seen it uh, said, you have got to share that because it tells your story. Love it. Okay, let me ask you this question. So that's all great. That's all wonderful. That's all spectacular. How did you de uh, deploy it? How did you, and, and I'm sure it's a journey. And, I'm, and, and then if you hire individuals, new people, right? How do you get them inculcated into your, your spectacular culture? That is, a, that is a great question. That's why and I make the big bucks here. <laughs> if you're looking at me on the video, I'm shaking no. <laughs> but if you want to donate, go right ahead. I'm all into that too. <laughs> we documented that journey. And a lot of the things that I've said to you this morning, talking about the fact that, that, you know, what those core values are, we actually hire by core values. I literally will ask you to define your definition of what those core values are to you. And there are no wrong answers. It's just a way for us to see if we're alive. <laughs> I can imagine, Bob, he asked me and I'll say, I like cars. That's a wrong answer, Scott. That's not in line with what I've, that's a wrong answer. I can't imagine you coming out and saying that to anybody. <laughs> oh, but what I have found is that, that by doing that, they know where we stand. Right. And if we aren't aligned early, oh. we're never going to be aligned. And yeah. so I would right. rather help you be successful somewhere else. Right. Uh, it's doing you a favor. It's doing me a favor so that we don't make a mistake. But we have, uh, we actually have a book that we, a little booklet that we put together. Uh, it's called a, uh, a guide to greatness and it's, it's around lift up. And then I like that. We hey, by the way, before that. I forget uh, everything on the podcast, I need those values, the five points that you put out. And then I need that booklet and I need a lot of things, but I just wanted it to plant that seed in your head because I need it. Absolutely. And yeah. I will, maybe I'll uh, just send you my resume because I like what you're doing. <laughs> I will also try to make that available on our website. At, I like uh, it. Like it. Yeah. Good, good. Uh, but what, what we can do is what we do also is we've got a lot of, of uh, ex military guys and, and uh, my CFO, Doug Markham, great individual uh, retired from the Navy and he, when he retired, he had given me one of his military coins and had his name on it and the emblem and rank and all those good things. Yes. And I loved that idea of some, uh, of something that is of value, but not monetary value. Uh, now, if you're out just uh, for the listeners out there, if you're out on the, the video, you, 
And if you're not out on the video, he's uh, lifting up a coin that they offer, and it's uh, – there it is, man. Committed lift. Anyway, it looks cool. Go ahead. Well, th these coins, we had one made up custom for every one of the core values. And then we put together a program where your peers, all the people around you, can nominate you if they catch you in the act of living out our core values. And they have to tell why. And then that gets submitted in weekly uh, and in my management meeting. So every good act uh, is recognized by management. Now, not all of them qualify for a coin because these are highly coveted uh, prizes. Uh, and then... Yeah, you got to make it worth... So oh, you gotta, I mean, it just can't just hand them out like, like pennies. No, I mean, absolutely. And all of a sudden the value just begins to plummet. Right. And, oh, yeah. and the, you the, work for it. the team loves them. They display them with pride. And at the end of the year, we, we have a gold coin, which is the lift up coin. And, and that actually represents the one individual in the entire company who represented us and our core values better than anyone else. If we sent that individual to Mars and they couldn't speak Martian, that individual would know what Spock Automation stood for. Wow. And, and he gets a, he or she gets a uh, monetary prize on top of that. But really that coin and that recognition is worth a lot more than, than the monetary. So this is interesting. So I, I, I see the value. I see the benefit. I see all of that. And that's all great at uh, Spock Automation. Now, one final question is, does it positively impact your bottom line? I mean, if, if, if I'm a company and I'm sitting here going, hey, this is all fantastic. It's wonderful. But man, it's going to uh, come on. Does it really help? Absolutely. That is, I have, I have the numbers to prove it. There you go. <laughs> Uh, you know, we've we've been fortunate enough to be one, one of Inc. 5000's fastest growing companies in America uh, three times in the last decade. Get out so of here. There's a little proof there. During this pandemic slash oil and gas war, um, we took a double doozy yeah. in, in our industry. And yet, because of that, that culture, because of that innovative spirit, my team, not me, not my marketing firm, my team came up with an idea to do something called two minute drives because we have lift up, which is an internal program. Yeah. And then we have build up where we're trying to build up our industry. And so what they do is, is they've been making videos, our sales, our service, our engineers, even our production people. And they're giving away our knowledge the other people would charge you for this, wow. but they're giving away yep. knowledge to help yep. the industry, to educate them, yep. to tell them how to or why you should consider these things to make you profitable. As a result, we have outperformed the market 30, 35% on our web traffic, on our, on our, we're thriving in an environment that is not friendly. It's challenging, Lance for Doggon, sure. And I love the fact that you are offering this content, this information, these uh, little tidbits of success to an industry that needs it. And, and, and it's not a slam on the oil and gas. So oil no. and gas people don't take this as a slam. However, we are very reluctant sometimes to change and to, you know, be innovative. And now here is a great opportunity. We always talk about the challenges of COVID that one side and it did this that and the other thing and it's all negative but i'm telling you right now there's a positive element to it whether we like it or not there's a positive element and that is people and companies like yours where you're saying okay i've got to adapt i've got to change i've got to innovate i've got to be able to get my message out and i've got to do it with a desire to help people succeed because if they don't succeed i don't succeed so i better help them succeed Amen. and then if they succeed i succeed it, it all works and, and to be able to have that other focus. And I love, I love that transition and I love the, where that is going there, Bobby. I love what you're doing at Spock. <laughs> it's the only thing that's a mess. It should have been a K. That would have been cool, Spock. Then you'd have, you know, Spock, ears, all of that stuff. It's hard to spell control with a K. <laughs> you could have been sort of on the edge and say control. This is control with a K. I'm changing the spelling. Anyway. All right, uh, Bobby, how do people get a hold of you? They can reach me at our website, uh, 
SPOC Automation, and that's S-P-O-C Automation, no dots or dashes, dot com. And uh, I'm also on LinkedIn under Robert Mason. So please reach out if I can be of any assistance uh, on this topic, on automation, on on anything. I'm I'm here to, to serve. That's what I'm made to do. That's right. And when you go out to his stack card on LinkedIn, he's got a beautiful head of hair, which is not there and but he is a handsome gent most definitely so yeah reach out to him you listeners out there bobby absolute uh, honor having you on the industrial talk podcast thank you very much my friend uh, uh, honor is truly mine and and thank you scott for what you do uh, it's a service all right listeners we're gonna wrap it up on the other side so don't go away we will be right back you're listening to the industrial talk podcast network All right, thank you very much for joining the Industrial Talk Podcast. We're going to wrap it up. Bobby Mason is the man. He is the president and CEO at Spock Automation. That's S-P-O-C. Go out to his stat card, LinkedIn. Type in Robert L. Mason. Goes by Bobby. You'll find him. Reach out to him. They're doing innovative uh, solutions at that organization. And I'm telling you right now, I'm inspired. I'm inspired by Lift Up. I'm inspired by what... Uh, Bobby is doing as team at Spock. Fantastic stuff. All right. I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to challenge you right now before we just roll out of here. Find people that are bold. Find people that are brave. Find people that are innovative. And I'm telling you, your world is going to change. Reach out to Bobby. I'm telling you right now, he's bold, brave, and daring greatly. Big time right there. And your world is going to change. All right. Thank you very much for joining the Industrial Talk Podcast. We're going to have another great interview right around the corner, so you better stay tuned and join us for the next one.